Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to the first episode of this new Laravel series. Since Laravel is a pretty big framework, it can be frightening and confusing the first time you open it. I will spend a couple of lessons just to help you get used to the file structure and understand how to navigate the different sections of Laravel and which files to use whenever you have to modify something. So let's get started. First of all, if you didn't follow the previous video or if you didn't set up a local development environment, you cannot access the first installation of Laravel that you can see it here from a URL. But there's no problem, if you don't want to spend time in setting these things up, you can use the built-in server of Artisan that comes with Laravel. So if we access our terminal and we point to the directory of our Laravel installation, we can run PHP Artisan serve. And by doing this, a local virtual server will start running at port 8000 of our machine. And of course, we can access our Laravel installation without any previous setup required. To stop Artisan from running, you can just simply hit Control C on your keyboard. So whenever you install Laravel for the first time and you create a new project, this is the first page that you usually see, or at least it's the page that you see in version 5.7, the current version that we're running. If we access our code editor, you can see that Laravel comes with a lot of files and folders, and that can be confusing. So for now, we're gonna just try to ignore all the extra folders that we're not gonna use and try to focus on just small steps to understand how Laravel works and how to edit the first things. So first of all, let's completely ignore all these folders and all these files. These files, you don't have to touch it, just like, who cares? <laughs> we don't really care about this. The thing that we need to understand is that how can we identify where Laravel is generating this first page, where Laravel handles the traffic coming into that application via web routes. So if, for example, we start poking around the folders, you see there's a folder called public. And if we open public, you see there's an index.php. So first thing that you always have to remember, you never have to touch whatever is inside this public folder. You never have to edit the index.php since it's an automatically generated file from Laravel and it takes care of building our application and calling our application, calling all the files that are necessary in order for the app to run. You don't have to do anything inside this public folder. Even the CSS, JavaScript, SVG or images or all the assets that you will use in your application will go inside here automatically without you doing anything in order to generate those. But we're going to take a look at these things later in this series. For now, just remember that it doesn't matter if here there's an index.php, don't touch this folder. The home page that is getting generated for the first time when we access our new installation is inside the resources folder, inside the views folder. And there you go, we have the welcome.blade.php. This file is a PHP file, but has a Blade extension because Blade is a template engine used inside Laravel. And you will notice there there's something weird inside the Blade template. For example, these double curly brackets or mustache, how weird developers like to call it. And then we have some uh, kind of like strange PHP condition with this at and then if else, auth, and auth, and if, and stuff like that. Well, these are all shortcuts and method that we can use inside our Blade template. But you can see here now we have this first page. So for example, if we change the title from Laravel to my application, and we save, and we go back in our front end, we refresh, now we have this text my application, perfect. But how does Laravel know that when we hit our URL, the first page that the application needs to return is that welcome dot play dot PHP. There's nothing that says here, this is not called index. And we shouldn't be forced to use this welcome as a first file. We want to call it however we want. So that's handled by the routes. And as you can see right here, we have a folder called routes. And if we open it, we have a bunch of files. Just ignore all these files except for the web routes. We're gonna see later in the series why we have different files, how we can generate different routes and how we can use different routes to handle different aspects of our application. But the regular web navigation of our website is handled by the web routes. And if we scroll down to the web routes, you can see that by default we have just one single route. So now we have this class called route that whenever this class is getting the URL forward slash, so it's 
getting nothing, no no extension, no subdomain, no subpage, nothing, automatically is returning a uh, nameless function that returns a view called welcome. So the view, this method, is a built-in method of Laravel that returns whatever file it's called welcome.play.php inside the view folders. So this file is called welcome, that's why it's returning inside resources, views welcome. So for example, if we create a new file here and we call the index.blade.php, we open it and the only thing that I wanna do, I wanna just generate an h1 and say, this is the new index, perfect. So now if we wanna return this index.blade.php, the only thing that we need to do here, instead of returning welcome, we can return index. Let's save it. Go back in our front end. There you go, this is the new index. So now what if we wanna return the welcome whenever we access the welcome page, where well, we can define a new route. So we can say that route double column, whenever we get the page extension welcome or the page name welcome, comma, we can return a nameless function and inside the nameless function we can return a view and the view needs to tap a welcome page and semicolon at the end. If we save it, we go back in our front end, we refresh, oops, there's an error, and we forgot the semicolon at the end of the, our route file, but let's go back one second on the error. This is fantastic, this is an extension of Laravel that comes automatically whenever you install Laravel in your system, and this is a way better debugging system and error handling than the default PHP debugging or error handling system. So one thing that is necessary for you to understand while working with Laravel for the first time is understanding and learning how to read error messages. So we have a syntax error, an expected handoff file, and uh, this is just um, whatever it's triggering this error. So this is called by Symfony and it's a, a fatal error that cannot run our application. The error is coming from this file the sites, forum, routes, web.php, and the row where the error is present is highlighted here, and we have the return of the argument. Of course, there are many more informations here that are currently not necessary, but of course, in the future, when our application gets bigger and more complicated, we can handle get post data, cookies, and see if uh, we have some issue with the token and so on. But for now, we know that we forgot a semicolon because the error is telling us this. So try always to read the error and understand where you did the mistake. Let's hit the semicolon here, let's save it. Perfect, let's refresh the page. Awesome, now we have this new index. If you write welcome, boom. Let's go back to my application because it's the welcome page. Pretty cool, right? So what if I wanna organize all my views inside this folder, inside other folders, just to keep my folder structure, the resources view organized. I don't wanna have all the files here. For example, I have an about page, a contact page, and so on. I don't wanna keep everything here. So if, for example, I create a new folder called pages, and then I create a new file called about, dot blade dot php, and then here I create another h1 and say this is the about, page, save it. Now, if I wanna duplicate once again this route and say whenever I access the about directory, I wanna return uh, the about page, but the about page is not anymore inside the regular views. So I can say view, go inside the pages folder, period, and get me the about. There you go. Let's see if it works. So if we go here and we say about, this is the about page, fantastic. So the Laravel router is pretty smart in understanding the file structure that we can create here and there's a there's no limit in the type of structure that we can create inside the views folder. We can do whatever we want and just specify the different directories separated by a period. And of course, I don't have to tell you this, but you notice that we don't have to write the welcome.play.php. Automatically, the router view or the view method in the router is capable of handling this for us, which is pretty fantastic. So because I don't wanna overwhelm you too much, let's stop this first lesson here, but I wanna give you a little homework. So I want you to create a sort of like a homepage 
with a couple of links and if you don't want to create any new structure or anything you can use the uh, structure that we have in the initial welcome page and I want you to create a bunch of links that they go directly to the sub pages that you're going to create and you can create all the sub pages that you want you could create the about contact me uh, the blog page or whatever but just do this exercise to get used to handling different routers and different get requests and return different views based on different directories in the views folder. Well, that's pretty much it for this lesson. Thank you guys for watching and I talk to you in the next one.